I think two big vectors that are, are happening. One is with increasing globalization, specialization and complexity. The, the supply chain is getting more complex and complicated. And on the other hand, with all the developments we're seeing is there's an increased need for speed that companies that serve their clients faster uh, do better. We're expecting same day delivery. We've now invested in a company that has 10 minute grocery delivery. So the whole, the whole world is moving towards faster evolution. And so with more complexity and faster evolution, the big challenge is how do you get it right? And how, how do you get the kind of transparency that's needed to know where things are and how do you make sure that you don't create a lot of extra work in informing and triggering the events that happen in a complex supply chain. Yeah, I think the interesting thing is we've had huge advances in the last five years of, of what is possible in technology. And we've moved from monolithic software solutions to uh, modular microservices. And I think the two things that technology can help do here is on the one hand, create real transparency of what the status of the system is at any given point and create real predictions from that to say, when do you expect what to happen? And on the other hand, because of the increased complexity and the different services interacting, there's an explosion of the amount of work potentially required to make everything run smoothly. And technology can play a big role in automating parts of that uh, and therefore lowering the amount of work that is, uh, that is required from every participant in the supply chain. That uh, creates powerhouse, of course, uh, in the visibility space. Um, yeah, with two of yeah the larger players merging together, so it shows that uh, also consolidation in this tech area um, is actually happening. And um, yeah, there's a few different providers on that front, and uh, it's a big signal to the market that you apparently also need uh, size uh, to matter. And uh, maybe on a on a personal note, uh, I'm I'm very happy uh, for for Constantine, who has been the founder of Ocean Insights, who has been a colleague of mine uh, nearly ten years ago in Hong Kong, uh, with that exit. So also from my side, big congratulations to to Constantine. Yeah, so port congestion uh, became a very big topic. Uh, the most prominent example is at the moment in Long Beach, Los Angeles, where there are 30 plus vessels waiting to berth at the terminal. The reasons are, uh, there's a multi multitude of reasons for that. The terminal operations, uh, of course, are, are one major part of it, but of course, also the demand curve, which has really risen after uh, the Corona lockdown and the surge of volumes over the last six months. This is really something which makes it very, very hard for the ports and terminals to improve the situation. We had a similar topic in Australia and Sydney before. We had also a topic in the UK. So it's not only, let's say, a single incident now on the west coast of the US, but it's something which will also occur in other parts of the world over the next months. For sure, can also have from a short-term perspective a positive effect because shipping lines are really trying not to go into this, I would call it traffic jam on the West Coast and putting even more vessels at the end of the line. So um, a small profiter of that is the also the Asia-Europe trade with a bit better equipment availability. But the problem is that the containers who are sitting in the U.S., that they are not getting re-evacuated quick enough towards Asia again to be then used for the export. So that is in, in essence uh, the, the biggest problem. 